Now, the FDB is a key financial of, of some of Kenya's largest infrastructure projects. Give us an inside look at some of the discussions around that. What we've identified here is that the key impediments to growth, unlike, uh, just like many other countries in Africa, is infrastructure. It's really the infrastructure deficit. You only need to actually spend a little bit of time in Nairobi, the traffic, uh, the situations like that. So that's the focus area. Uh, and we've been very, very active with the government here. Many of the roads that have been financed have been financed by the African Development Bank. And we've got a large uh, pipeline of potential new road projects that we need to do. The important one being from the airport into the town, which is always congested, as anybody who travels to Nairobi knows. In addition to that, however, we're also looking at the, the airports. Um, after the unfortunate fire, the African Development Bank financed the emergency temporary terminal here in, in, in Kenya. And we're also looking to work with the government to maybe construct a new, a new airport terminal and maybe a new runaway. You've told us about some of the big deals um, and infra in infrastructure that the AFDB has financed for Kenya uh, that ran into the billions of dollars. Where does management of funds come in and how do you see it from your point of view? It's a key component of everything that we do. I mean, we're a public institution, so every dollar that we lend out is accountable. We have to account for it. We have to try and track it and make sure it goes to where it's supposed to go. So, you know, there are conditions to our financing. We also like to stagger when we give the money so we don't give it all on day one. We see progress and then we give more. That's both for public sector and private sector. We also like to work with the governments, the implementing agencies of the government. So if, for example, we're financing a road project, the Ministry of Roads, we also work with them to see they have the capacity to implement it. And our Treasury has been on the spotlight for overspending, so to speak, mostly by Kenyans. But in their defense, they say um, that it is a necessary evil that they must put, uh, take on this capital intensive product, uh, projects in order for um, you know, the economy to, to, to keep moving. What are your thoughts around um, how much the Kenyan government is spending? I like to link it to your home or your house. You can't spend more than you bring in consistently for a long period of time without going bankrupt. It's the same for countries as well. So a good macroeconomic environment and stability is very important. Now, when you have an economy like Kenya, you have some advantages and some challenges. The advantage is it's a large economy, so it good, it's a good uh, base to attract inflows of financing. A lot of private investors would like to put their money into Kenya. A lot of investors would like to finance things in Kenya. So Kenya's got a good opportunity to attract finance. That's the positive side. But those same investors are looking at Kenya in comparison to other countries and other regions of the world. And if the macroeconomic environment in Kenya is poor, they will take their checkbooks and they will go somewhere else. There's been a lot of excitement around Kenya's growth rate um, between 5.5%, 6.9%. Um, but from a financier point of view, if Kenya does achieve uh, this growth rate, what would it mean? We, be, we have become a little blasé about 5% growth rates and 6%. These are very good numbers. Um, and I think if, if a country can consistently maintain those kind of numbers, it makes uh, economic growth and pulling people out of poverty so much more easier. Having said that, the truth of the situation is that Africa probably needs double-digit growth, 10 11% consistently for maybe 5 to 10 years to really make an impact. It's been done in the East African uh, in the East Asia uh, economies. It was done in Latin America some time ago, to, and that really pulls a majority of people out of poverty, as long as you have a balanced approach to economic growth and economic activity. What are your thoughts about domestic resource mobilization? Um, African countries as a whole have been on the spotlight, uh, being told that the tax bases could grow a lot more faster and a lot more um, larger and could be tapped into by the national governments. Um, what are your thoughts about that and what does the AFDB advise African countries on the same? It's actually been one of the major items. I, I, I would say over the last three to five years it's really become more and more important. And at the recent uh, conference in, Ad in Addis on the Financing for Development Conference, big conference, global conference, the issue now has changed. Ten years ago, the discussion on those big co donor conferences was African governments do these following things and you'll get more aid. The situation has now changed uh, to one of African governments. Now, what tools do you need to manage your economies better, to collect your taxes better, 
to collect domestic resources better and more efficiently manage your economies. And then we will try and unlock private sector financings for you. So the, 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 it's evolved now. And so domestic resource mobilization, tax collation, collection, and efficient use of taxes is really going to be more important than any of the aid that's going to come to the continent.